And we're live. Welcome, everybody, to the Casually Hardcore Podcast. I'm your one of your hosts, Brian. And joining me, as always, is Chris. Hello. <laughs> and we have a special guest, Rob, of Rule of Tube Review, is joining us for this special Nintendo-themed podcast. I really want to th- uh, say a huge thanks to Rob for showing up and agreeing to come on the podcast. Uh, just so anybody who does not know, Rob, uh, does uh, you do a lot of videos regarding a lot of topics, but you do have a passion uh, for Nintendo. I thought you'd be a perfect guest for this. I've discovered Rob uh, and his channel, Rule of Two of You, which if you're watching on YouTube, we'll be sure to include the link in the description below. You should totally check out his content. He makes really high quality videos, really solid opinions. Thank you. But I, I was a fallen away Nintendo fan, and anybody who's fallen us knows that. Like the Wii and the Wii U, I just wasn't there. It did not, um, it did not speak to me. And the Switch in and of itself is a game changer. And so as my interest in Nintendo peaked, Rob's videos uh, did on YouTube as well. And so that's how I discovered him. And he is, uh, I, I love his insight. And so, Rob, I'd like you to, uh, you know, introduce yourself a little bit to the uh, work to game audience as well. At the same time as, you know, the the first real topic is what are we playing? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it over to you, Rob. Why don't you take it? Sure. Yeah. I mean, thanks so much. Obviously, super, super thrilled uh, to have been invited. So thanks, Brian and Chris. Uh, love to hear that your Nintendo passion has been rising over the last couple of years. That's kind of like the weird Switch effect, man. It's kind of, I think, brought a lot of people back to Nintendo who maybe weren't paying as much attention to them. So that's been cool. And mm-hmm. um, and yeah, I just, I'm just really excited. I want to give one shout out to my buddy. I know I mentioned to you Go guys, my friend. He'll be thrilled to hear his name. My best friend back home in Denver, Chad LaRue, my buddy. It, uh, really excited I was going to be on the podcast. He's a huge fan of the Casually Hardcore podcast. And uh, yeah, so good to meet everybody. Happy, happy to be on. And I mean, do you want me to just kind of jump into something I'm playing? Yeah, what are, you, what are you playing right now? Just go ahead and jump in. Sure. Okay, yeah. Um, I won't spend too much time on this first one because it's not a Nintendo game. And this is supposed to be a Nintendo pet podcast. But I am very hooked on God of War right oh, now. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh, spending so much time on that game. Everyone's been hearing all the hype, of course, about this game. 10 out of 10 masterpiece, best Sony exclusive. And I mean, like, the game lives up to its hype. I, I don't know, I assume maybe you guys might be kind of messing with it yourselves or playing it. In this case, uh, I, I'm not. Chris, do you want to take it? Uh, I, I am not. Um, uh, last year, I started taking on anything that said it was a good game because we had kind of a drought. And so when the word good popped up, I was like, well, I don't want to miss it. Yeah. And uh, I called Brian at some point, almost having like an anxiety attack, like 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 you would for work or like a relationship. And I'm like, I'm just so stressed all the time and I'm not sleeping and I'm having trouble sticking to my diet. And he's like, what do you think it is? And we talked for a bit and I realized this is so dumb. I was playing too many games and I had committed games. to Brian that I would play Final Fantasy with him. And I had committed to my brothers that I would play Call of Duty with him. And I... And I committed to these different people. And I felt like every time I got on a game that I was letting nine other people down, mm. these like promises and commitments. So That's this so year funny. I have had a hard rule for three games at a time, no more. So God of War has not made the cut. Oh, but I've watched a bunch of it. Dude, <laughs> it, it should make your cut eventually, maybe with your next three. Uh, you really should check it out. It's such a special game. I, I, got, I got a question. And the, the first piece is, of it is a statement, and then we'll, we'll could, we keep moving on. The, uh, <laughs> sure. Chris also, and the, for those of you who don't know, and those of you who also suffer from this, Chris is also a wannabe completionist. He used to be a completionist, but then he I has am. a job. And, <laughs> and, it beca- and, and it's a constant tension. My wife is the same way. So I don't, I don't know if you, Rob, or anybody out there watching right now is also... uh, they consider themselves a completionist but my wife will spend and will like hours on the same level like in super meat boy or whatever because no i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do it right i'm not moving to the next thing oh those little star ratings it's like well there there's three stars but then there's the bonus medal i got and i I haven't got the bonus medal (laughs) i do have a (laughs) follow-up rob for you okay so obviously you know the theme of of nintendo so zelda versus god of war both tens both masterpieces Yep. Which one should people play first? Well, you know, <laughs> here's the thing. I will say that while I do agree they're both basically tens, I mean, I do think Breath of the Wild is the better game for sure. Okay. Um, as far as what to play first, 
I think it just depends on like how much time you have. Like everyone has different levels of free time. And I know I struggle with that. And it sounds like you guys, obviously same thing, <laughs> jobs, wives, relationships. Like, you know, for me also a band as well. Like, mm -hmm. that gets away. You're a drummer, right? Uh, I am a drummer. Yeah. 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 I was at uh, uh, rehearsal yesterday, actually. Um, so, and you know, so it's, it's kind of about how much time you have. And I'll say God of War is impressing me with how big that game is and how much open how much more open it gets as you progress way more content than i expected but it still pales to zelda so if you're going to play zelda which i don't know if you guys have played yet but oh yeah you need yeah you need days it was one of the ones that caused the problem so yeah it's, so it really just depends <laughs> if you have the time zelda first if you don't have the time god of war first but you can't go wrong either way all oh, right that's fun. great so what yeah. else are you playing rob um, so on the Nintendo side, I actually um, have been getting back into Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Beautiful game, which, beautiful uh, game. Yeah, so good. Uh, the first one on the Wii really impressed me, and, and I'm one of those, I think, few weirdos that thinks that's the best of the three. Um, but they're all very good, and with Xenoblade, it was a little bit tricky for me because it, it came out, and I was so excited, and I started it, and I loved it, but it didn't, like get its hooks in me the same way the first two really did. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I ended up kind of taking a break from it. it. I was like, I was like, this is a little too JRPG for me right now. I'm not feeling a JRPG heavy kind of game. And some other things started distracting me. Monster Hunter distracted me big time when that came out. Uh, oh, but uh, probably about a month ago, mm -hmm. I was like, you know, let me just let me just put this back in. I really want to play more through it. I had put about 25 hours in it first. Yeah. And once I did that, until God of War came out last week, I was like nonstop Xenoblade. And it, it really did finally get its hooks in me. And the story is great and the combat's awesome. So that's been my Nintendo game of choice so far this year. Is that's fantastic. And yeah. anything else you're playing besides God of War? Like, have you finished God of War? Like, or is it is it you know, one for the history books or are you still working on it? Oh, no, I'm still working on it. Okay. Um, I'm probably about halfway through. I texted with my brother who beat it, and I was like, oh, I just got here. And he's like, yeah, you're about halfway. So okay. that's that's where I'm. I've been playing it this morning. I had to stop playing it to get on the podcast with you guys, actually. <laughs> that's the real reason he has to be gone in an hour. He's like, all yeah. right, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> so. I need to finish Break. this thing. So, uh, um, so, yeah, and then so uh, I, I'm guessing, uh, do you think Xenoblade's going to pull you back in as soon as you finish God of War? Yeah, that's my plan. I want to make it back to uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I want to make it back to that as soon as I'm done with God of War. Although, also another non Nintendo game. I'm not trying to do that. You're fine. Us. It's what but, you're playing. Uh, it's not you know what you're playing on one system. This is sure. this is who we are as gamers. We're not one. You know, we're not a, like a, a puzzle piece. We're like, oh, I'm sure. only Nintendo, and, and yeah. some people don't have that choice, and those are people I do feel for. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, like I know, I mean, we're we're all adults. Like, ideally, we can afford at least two consoles or at least a PC. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, tell tell us what uh, what else you're playing. Um, yeah, well, so when Detroit Become Human comes out, that's one uh -huh. I'm also really excited for. Um, and that's I've brought this up in a video. That's one that my girlfriend and I will get to play through together because nice. we love kinds of things and. I'll get to play the game and we get all invested in the story mm -hmm. and then the game's gonna throw like choice after choice and we get to kind of together like pick what we're gonna choose and we did that with Until Dawn and we tried to keep everyone alive through that game and totally failed by the end, but <laughs> fun to try. Yeah. So so Detroit will hook me for a week or two, but other than that, yes, as soon as God of War is done, it's back into Xenoblade and then a, a short break for Detroit also. Excellent. So Chris, what are you playing right now? I am playing World of Warcraft, uh, trying to see how many 110s I can get going into Battle for Azeroth. I really didn't come back for Legion. I just came back because I don't like going into an MMO feeling naked, like feeling like you don't have like a decent level of characters that are at the previous cap and that you have money and bag space and like a general understanding of what they've done if you've taken a long break. Mm. Good MMO the new expansion, expansion prep. Yeah, because the new expansion, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be new and different, but it's going to be a sidestep from current content. Mm -hmm. And so you should have a feel for what is going on currently so that the new stuff makes sense. Because some of the new systems, they would only be new to you. They're not new to the game. Um, and then I've been playing Final Fantasy, and so I'm finally getting to all my alternate classes. I always say I'm going to level my other jobs, and I never do. Uh, and then I have been playing Dragon Quest Builders on the Switch. Uh, I hear that's I a good game. People love that It's game. beautiful. Like, it is yeah. so beautiful. It's what I want a non MMO experience to be like, I'm not looking for a solo RPG. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for something that has a little more of like a building. Just let's gather the things. Crafting, let's kinda. just, yeah. Something I can just do relaxed. I don't really have to pay attention. 
Um, the combat system is pretty basic. So there's not a whole lot to get lost in. It's just relaxing. You and there's ends up being this moment in time, especially nowadays, that you do end up appreciating the ability to pause when you have a, like a family, a job, or like kids, something that can immediately take your attention away. The ability to pause a game ends up being something that, like, for most games that at least I enjoy, don't have that feature. When I was playing Destiny 2, like, no, there's no pause. Like, the world's still going on. Like, you know, you're just going to get shot and die. When, you know, like, and with a lot of group-based content, which obviously, like, you know, that I, I like to play. Because I, I, I really enjoy playing video games for the group. Uh, my wife and I, uh, this was years ago, but we played through the uh, the first uh, Tomb Raider, the Definite Edition, when it came out on the new generation. Mm-hmm. And we loved it. But, like, just like you're thinking about playing, um, you know, uh, Beyond Human or uh, Detroit, like... Uh- Detroit become human, yeah. Detroit, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, get awesome. dyslexic up on this. <laughs> That's okay. um, but like, we like to play it together, even though it's a single player game. And then, oh, try to solve a puzzle together, or you know, at least enjoy and take part in the story in and of itself. And so there, there's always been, um, you know, a multiplayer component in my gaming history, even my past Final Fantasy games, even Mario. I was telling the story to somebody online the other day that. Uh, like, me and my sister, like, in college, we came back. Uh, one summer, we decided we were going to 100% Super Mario World on the on the Super Nintendo. And so we did it. You know, it was it's a memory that I'll always cherish. So it's just like, I always look at that multiplayer component. But as an adult, when I'm playing, especially with people online, it's like, hey, okay, I got to go, you know, be an adult. I got to go yeah. take care of the, the trash, the kids, you know, Julie, dinner, uh, works calling, things like that. So... Mm-hmm. When you find that game, like Chris was talking about, with <laughs> sometimes it's nice to like that's the switch. Pause. All right, yeah. I'll be right back. It's gonna wait for me. It's not a big deal. And the, this is one of the things I actually have really fallen in love with about the switch, just as this little minute detail, how quick and easy it is to get in and out of the game and the systems. Oh yeah, it very is, optimized OS mm-hmm. and very streamlined system. They did such a good job with that. Hugely, it 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 completes the experience, and it's the thing that ties everything together because. Like, I've, the game that I've been playing, um, outside, I've been leveling up Samurai 14, and I just hit 60, going to, now I just got the last 10 levels, but the game my daughter and I have been playing together, she's not really skilled at it, is Celeste on the Switch, and that is a phenomenal game. I would rate that game as a 10 itself. Obviously, it's 20 bucks, so, like, price, I think, and the score that I would give a game exactly. is all IG related. gave that game a 10, though. They, oh. they, they gave that game a 10, yeah. I, did, I didn't even know that. Like, I, w- yeah. I would just see. I think that game is just a perfect platformer, you know, and it's so interesting, but it's so hard. So, Maddie can't, she's four, you know, she can't do it, but she loves yeah. watching it. She t- makes up stories about what's happening on screen. It's so funny to see her imagination her lie. stories are incredible. <laughs> if somebody would just animate her stories, it'd be the greatest YouTube channel ever. It probably, you know, like there are. She doesn't play awesome. Mario Kart. What's the name of the game she plays? <laughs> Mario and the Racers. <laughs> Way it like, better. It sounds like a, it sounds like a band. <laughs> exactly. It sounds like a band. Way better. Mario and the Racers. It's Mario and the Racers playing their it's, big hit Green Shell. It's funny. Um, I, I liked the the element you first brought up about the ability to pause mm-hmm. games. How different that is, and obviously like MMOs and whatnot, and. You made a Destiny comparison. It's interesting because that is weirdly a byproduct of this online heavy age we live in. I mm-hmm. mean, that's the reason yeah. there are games you can't do that. You're connected to a world. You're connected to other players. Like, you can't pause that. And there are you can't pause the server. You <laughs> can't pause that server, man. People are going to kill you and loot you and get all the everything. And so it's just interesting where it's just kind of a sign of the times that mm-hmm. that's a problem that, you know, busier guys like us maybe run into mm-hmm. where we can't do that with a lot of our favorite games. Even like I love Bloodborne and Dark Souls and stuff like that. And those games are really single player, but also you can't truly pause them. They continue to run because there is an online server thing happening. Mm-hmm. And so it's just that is kind of creeping into more and more games as we keep going in this age. And it's interesting like that there's like a split with those kinds of games. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I... The, uh, I think that also gives us a fantastic segue into kind of E3 for Nintendo because I would segue as in, so let's talk about Nintendo's online platform. Let's, you know, uh, obviously I think that Thank we're, they've, they've announced that they're going to talk about it in a month. And what's yeah. in a month? E3. So I guess my question for you, Rom, and I'd love to know your insight on in this. Do they spend time in the video talking about it? Or I, or I, I'll get your thoughts before I share mine. Or is this something yeah. that happens pre-E3? Um, so, to my knowledge, I actually think it is supposed to be pre-E3 by probably a week or so, uh, because what I think they came out and said is in, it, it is in a month, mm-hmm. uh, but it, it's in May. 
So I'm thinking it's maybe going to be the last week of May or the, the middle of May, right before E3 starts mm -hmm. in early June. So my, my, what I anticipate is they'll somehow release the information. I don't know if they're going to give us like a video package presentation about here it is. This is what the pricing structure, what it breaks down to and what you get for each thing and what if there's voice chat or virtual console. Um, and then maybe they even go further into detail at E3. I think it would be crazy for them not to, to go to touch on it at E3. Mm -hmm. Um, especially when, and I don't want to jump ahead topics, but we know they're going to focus on Smash Brothers, which is a very online heavy game. Mm -hmm. so I think it's, maybe it's, that's the, why it's an anchor tenant that's missing. You got it. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, I just feel like they, they probably want to get that information out into the ethosphere first. Then they get to talk about Smash and maybe combine that with more information and details about the online stuff. It makes sense in general with the direction the game industry is going. The game industry is a multi-billion dollar a year industry in every facet. When oh, yeah. you talk about MLG and streaming becoming mm -hmm. a billion dollar industry, that's yeah. not even the game itself. That's just that's just support staff and, and hype. And um, when you talk <laughs> about that, you have to realize that like E3 becomes a lot like Christmas, where you remember when like Black Friday when we were kids was this like, nah, yeah, there's going to be some deals. And then next thing you know, like Christmas starts in like October. Yeah, they figured it out. They're like, all oh, these gamers They're have like, money oh, now. Oh, mm -hmm. these gamers have money now. They've yeah. hit their real jobs. They've at least got their student loan, loan payments either paid off or an income deferment. Or in we control. might as well, <laughs> we might as well uh, start cashing in on them, brutal. get them hyped because it's hard when you when you wait till E3 to make your big announcement, it gets washed in a field full of big announcements from every developer. Well, and that's why you've seen more and more companies go before E3 with their own kind of presentations so they can get the word out before it gets drowned out. Because essentially E3 be was becoming like, you have to scream so loud and spend so much money when they're like, oh, we can just go cheaper, do our own little thing, and we mm -hmm. become the news cycle for a week. And then it's like, and then I think, Rob, you're right. I think it's that you, you definitely do Tax it beforehand. East. Yeah. Axis just well, happened, can... and it had like eight or nine things. I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah. And it's still incredible that it's like, "What's at E3?" Like, it's E3 is still a magical time because I think all of us, especially like as kids, this is you know, as Julie's my wife has described it to me, is that it's my Super Bowl. I'm not a big sports yeah. guy. I played like so. I played football, played baseball, um, and I just don't watch sports on TV. I play video games, and she's described it as a balance because. She doesn't lose me every Sunday for a football game, but I do go play video games. And what we've done as adults is we've just scheduled that time. It's kind of like, you know, okay, it's Wednesday night at this time. Brian's playing video games, and that's what he's doing. And he's not out of the golf course for six hours. You know, maybe I should golf. It's a little a good exercise. But, you know, for the most part, like, you know, every, we all have our things. And what we guys touched on I thought was really key, and it ties to the overall thing, is that one of the reasons not only do we have money but we all grew up playing video games video games are a part of i would say our dna right every one of us here on this podcast everyone watching on on the stream or watching this later on youtube video games have been a part of our lives like for me and rob you kind of said that you know you never really gotten into final fantasy that's not a big deal for me it helped me learn how to read because i'm, I'm dyslexic so it gave me an, enough oh. interest to overcome my disability and, I, and, and so it's like, it's, I have always will have that. And I think that's, yes, it's a hype machine, but it's also, it's also the water cooler. Our water cooler is no longer just this one place that we meet at work. Our water cooler is Twitch and YouTube and, you know, Mixer and whatever platforms are coming up next. And I think Nintendo has, it's, they're setting themselves up because they had just in, a, in an unbelievable year last year. Nintendo just dominated 2017. And I think already they're teeing it up for the same thing. So my question to you, Rob, is so. what does Nintendo do? What do they do to melt your mind E3 this year? Just like, you know, I want you to go, I want you to go as, as fun and crazy as you can, and then we'll, then we'll bring it back. Then we'll bring it back <laughs> to okay. reality. Yeah, it, we'd have to actually do that too, because the things that would melt my mind are not likely, I don't think. <laughs> so <laughs> it would be kind of like a wish list, but... Uh, for me, I mean, obviously, I, I'm, I'm a huge Metroid fan. It's mm -hmm. my number one favorite thing, and, and a lot of people who maybe follow my channel are familiar with that. And we know we got some part. Metroid back behind you as well. I do. That's not a mistake, man. Let me tell you what. I love me some Metroid. It's some good stuff. And so because of that, like with Metroid Prime 4 coming, it, it would be great to see that game like really detailed and showcased at E3, and even beyond that, to have that announced as a 2018 game. 
um, because the conversation around Metroid has been so just all over. The, everyone's talking about it and mm -hmm. curious about it. Nintendo's given us like nothing other than like, hey, it's coming. You would know, you we'll would you rather know um, years in advance, like Final Fantasy VII remake years in advance? Like that game's still not probably coming this decade. My my theory. Uh, would you rather know that far in advance that they're working on something, or would you rather them say, hey, hey, Rob, December, this is yeah. this is for you, buddy. Like, what what's your preference? Really, really good question. It's like a super topical question too. Um, it's. <laughs> The Final Fantasy comparison is tricky because I think that they just totally mishandled the announcement and their schedule with that game. And Square, we love them. They're super talented. They make amazing games, but they suck at scheduling and they take forever to develop. I'm so not gonna they could have a great 2018. <laughs> they are in yeah. a unique position. It is really exciting. It's like watching like your team's the Browns. And yeah. like <laughs> they, suddenly it's like, oh my God, they might not just win one game. Yeah. They might win most of them. The, 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 <laughs> it's like 2018 could be our year. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna put a question in on, on that one before we continue because <laughs> it's really interesting. Is that I, I I do not disagree that like it's there is definitely a management and I would say a lot of rework that happens in the development world. For those who don't know, rework is having to like just do something the same thing over and over again because because the things change because scope changes because yeah, all that. It took so long a new platform comes new out. platforms come out. <laughs> um, but also I, I would I would personally. I would personally kind of somewhat tie some of the uh, that to Sony as well. Sony is they do they they have been pushing announcements and I and and it's actually really worked for them. So, but I think there is this fatigue that comes with that. You can be hyped for only so long, and we've seen that with the exception of God of War. God of War for Sony was the I think the exception to the rule, wherein if you go look at several of their other games that were hyped for so long, they eventually come out and it's like. There's just this sigh, like, oh, you know, um, yeah. you know, we all know of like various examples because everybody's yeah. been, but it got, that's where God of War stands out as the exception, but that's been the Sony business model and one, you know, not the one reason, but one of the reasons why I think they've been able to be so successful this generation when, and where Microsoft has really struggled games wise uh, and they, and they, and they kept it close to the chest and then eventually it's like, well, what's coming out in five years? I don't know. We don't know what they're working on, but the Nintendo... I think they're taking a play out of Microsoft's book. They they announced the Switch so close to release. Like they, we we're, you. Uh, that's one of the things I really liked about your videos. Is like you were like, we have no information, but we have these little hints, and they're not saying even when they're going to tell us. And then do you they're like, when Apple oh, used to do that. Who? Who did? Apple. Apple. Oh, yeah. Every really? every major announcement was this is coming out, and you can order it today. Yeah, they do. They still today. do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But their products well, have gotten I, a lot worse. Anyway, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Rob, the, the, uh, like getting us back on topic because that's just you know you're absolutely right. I think that you know the, the announcements. Yeah. So, but back to the obviously the focus of would you want it in December when they well, they say hey Rob, bookmark December if that's the month. We can also talk about when it would fit in their schedule, or would you rather them tell you three years and say hey Rob, uh, December 2020, that that's your day. So, well, go ahead, Chris, if you yeah. Ready. Chris, so I, I guess I guess my question is so I think it's interesting to think would I rather them announce way off or or in the near future but I guess my bigger question going into E3 is that when you go look at Nintendo's website for announcements for confirmed dates between June and December it is wide open it is I mean it open. is yeah it is wide open mm -hmm. like like the level of open where like you know, when you're at the dentist and they're trying to schedule your next appointment, they're like, is October 23rd okay? And you're like, how would I know that? I won't have like, a mouth. I mouth have sure. nothing planned for games second half of this year. Yeah. And so what is not only the most hype game, but what is the list of missing in action key tenets of, of Nintendo that you think we might get this year? Okay. That's a good question. Yeah, that's... Those are all really good questions. It's a lot of questions, actually. Um, <laughs> I would say for, for things that could still happen beyond the fact that we know there's a Pokemon and a Metroid game that they are making for the Switch, so those could possibly fill that in. Um, Fire Emblem has been announced with just like a title card, but no info. So I think that's that was previously confirmed to be 2018. So obviously that's probably going to also fill that in. Um, I've been predicting an Animal Crossing for a long time. Mm. Not my series. Like, I'm not That's really... Good. Right, it. still. It's a huge series. It's, a, it's actually my, my girlfriend's favorite thing. So I'm excited for it for that reason, because she'll have that game to play. 
Um, and that's, I think, is like my Dark Horse pick, man, that's getting announced this year and I think is going to release this year. Um, Do you think you it'll know, have mobile integration? I think it's possible with the uh, the the mobile game they, that they came out mm-hmm. with recently as yeah. well. I think it's possible they do something like that. Um, was uh, I think a two D Mario has oh, a good yes. chance of showing up a new like a, a new Super Mario Brothers or even like a Mario Maker mm-hmm. port game. It could I be a port. They could even just put a two on it, add new assets, yeah. and everybody's fine, right? Because it's like exactly. cool. It's I, did, I again like I like I said I skipped. I, I was not. I did, I skipped the Wii. Switch oh, is my reentry point. It, it's my reentry point, and mm-hmm. so. Like you bring up that, like I, I pray, I pray, pray, pray for a 2D Mario because as good as Maddie is on uh, Mario Odyssey, it is a very, it's obviously it's got a higher skill gap and it's supposed to, and she really loves it. And I watch her and I've played on the 3DS with the, uh, um, you know, like the the, Mar- the the 2D Marios, and she like she's beating levels earlier sure. than I ever could have imagined, and it's yeah. just like oh I'm so excited for her, whether it's Mario Maker 2 or just a 2D Mario just to help offset that skill gap for her because her hands are small they can't hold the controller like you look at her yeah. and holding an xbox controller and then her you holding need to order the, a japanese controller well her holding the switch isn't perfect it's perfect you take those things off you, you dock it yeah the controls are tiny the joy cons are tiny yeah, yeah. And so anyway so I, I didn't mean to cut you off because i but that's just where i'm 100 percent on the 2d continue please well, yeah i mean th- those 2d games that's they almost make those for like that kind of player like what your daughter is and that mm-hmm. age they can still appeal to like the older gamers Nintendo just has that formula for those kind of games. And I'm telling you, dude, I think it's coming. I, su- I super think that it's coming. Um, F-Zero is another series I know that a lot of us have been waiting for. I don't know that we're going to see F-Zero, but it definitely is a game that people want. Uh, whether or not it can fill out the gap for this year, I, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. He's got to do this so, thing. Yeah, it's <laughs> she, uh, she likes being the center of attention, and she's good at it. Hey, most uh, kids, man. Most kids do. So, I guess when I go into E3, what is Nintendo competing against? We 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 kind of preface this as as you're a Nintendo guy, so Nintendo seems like the obvious predictions to do. Yeah. But I mean, they're not going to be the only people there. Mm-mm. So I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of big announcements for this year. Yeah. This is why I have a that's co-host. <laughs> so. Hey, that's cool. We're saying you, you got to do the dad thing, man. If it comes up, it comes up. It so comes that's, up. That's all, that's all. That's life, man. It's it's actually yeah. one of the great. It's a great blessing. Yeah. I love being a dad, and it's like one of the things I really love is um, I have a love of video games, and it's something that I am able to share with my kids because I like mm-hmm. got you know I played games with my sister and my brother. We call him the Yeti because we talk about him all the time, but he's yeah. never pictured. We never show <laughs> on our channel. And uh, what's really fun is that when you mentioned Animal Crossing, he loves Animal Crossing. Him and I have played will play Animal Crossing all the time oh, together, nice. and it, he just yeah. he just has always just really enjoyed that. It's kind of like I guess maybe even Chris's. Uh, you know, Dragon Quest Builders. It's like, it's so just relaxing. It's so different. It's such cool a kind of pressure. experience, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no pressure on it. Yeah. Um, so I guess, <clears throat> so Brian, I was, I was just asking him, like, mm-hmm. we, we talked about this being Nintendo predictions, but there's still other things that could happen out of E3. Oh, I yeah. mean, my number one pie in the sky is that we're getting a new eighth generation of Pokemon and it comes out this year. Yes. That that's like a November release. And and I don't know if Smash Brothers is December or no, it's no, gonna I, I, it, September. It, it, is it the late fall? I think is it what starts the season. The the, the Invitational I think is uh, Smash Brothers is what starts everything because if they delay po- or if Pokemon's set for November and it, even if it makes December, I can't even imagine. I, I know Rob, you said you're not a, a big Pokemon fan on your on your channel. Yeah, and that's, that's there's nothing wrong with that. Like every yeah, that's I'm the beautiful thing. Anti- I'm right. not anti-Pokemon. You're, I'm just, I'm you're like, I want to destroy every oh, copy God. of Pokemon yeah, out no there. More Pokemon, more like Nokemon. <laughs> uh, I I love Pokemon, and I want it to be an old school like. Let's take what Red and Blue was, and mm-hmm. let's take the power of the Switch and create a world so big, because it was bound to a single cartridge. But we don't have those limitations anymore. Yeah. So if you had Red and Blue, that graphics level, that combat system, but like all the Pokemon, like yeah. thousands all and an ability to trade Pokemon. with people. Yeah. Just go nuts. Just, and literally I picture like a hub of portals and you're literally playing each game 
Like you're yeah. just porting into these I mean, parallel universes. You, you could do that. One if, Pokemon to rule them all. Let, 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 let's say it was delayed. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. So, so let's this say it was November. delayed. Well, let's say it was delayed. <laughs> there's nothing to say they couldn't do just that. They couldn't say, here's your, here's every Pokemon game released for you to do to hold you over until we've gotten the new eighth generation Pokemon finished. So Nintendo is in a super powerful position. And this oh, yeah. is actually a question. That it's, this is going to lead to a question here that I think is very controversial, in my opinion. Oh, um, get some controversy. Get some, some controversy. Um, <laughs> but Nintendo has the best I- IP, you know, in, in, in all history. Like you, like Ever. it's the most iconic. It's they, they have the best. Um, <laughs> the problem as is as a that, stable. Yeah, as a stable, but, right? It, if you're comparing but, music studios, oh, yeah. not as an individual artist, not as an individual what, franchise. What Nintendo has struggled on for years is third party. That is no longer a problem. Yeah. And so that's actually one of the things. <laughs> that's is one it? The, it's not a problem right now, man. I have it's, played it's more third-party games. I have played more third-party games on the Switch than I have ever played on a Nintendo system over the last 10 years. So when they that's announced the Switch, the reason they said third-party was solved, was totally fixed, is because Unreal Engine would allow them to port any okay. existing game to the yeah. Switch in a year or less. Mm-hmm. That was the quote. Yeah, we don't even know your dev team, but an idiot and his dog could yeah. port his game over in a year or less. Yeah. And now we're seeing Dragon Quest get pushed. Now we're seeing Dark Souls get pushed. Yeah, there's weird stuff going on there. Rob, what is going on behind the curtain? I, 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 want, I want Rob to go. <laughs> well, I, I I I agree with both of you guys. I, I think you actually both make really good points on that. And to me, I I would say that it's not like the third party situation is fixed okay. for Nintendo. I don't know if that's really the way I would describe it, mm-hmm. but it has it is definitely improving and it is, and to your point Brian, is honestly, this is probably the best it's been since the Super Nintendo. So we're going back. Okay, many- jump it in. That- Which is better, Switch or Super Nintendo? For me, it's Super Nintendo. Okay. I'm gonna, it's, it's Super NES all the way, man. Like, that's but you're the- comparing the entire life of the Super Nintendo to Switch. True. It's not to say the Switch yeah. can't get there. I think the Switch that's has the potential for- I think the yes. Switch has the potential yes. to dwarf. Because Super Nintendo, in my opinion, is the best Nintendo console to date. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Switch is it is literally, like, if you look at it as a, 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 a race, is literally nipping at the heels. And all it needs yeah. is just, obviously, the library. You know, the, yeah. because the portability factor alone. I've been playing right. uh, Secret right. of Mana with Maddie on the, the SNES Classic. And every time we sit down to play that, I go... I would pay $60 to, to move this over to the Switch yeah, instantly totally. because I don't have to have wired controllers. I've got wi- wireless and portability. We can play together. Anyway, Rob, so I cut you off. Go ahead. No, that's okay. That's I mean, I like that you pose that question because to me, there's there's so much context that really you need to answer that question properly. One of them, Chris, you nailed it. Like We've had the whole life and pantheon of the Super NES behind us for decades. The Switch is a year old. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously, like you said, it's nipping at its heels. It's totally like doing fantastic. But when it's all said and done, more than likely the Switch will have the better library. And it's also an amazing system with like that hybrid nature. Like what a game changer that turned out to be. I'm also a nostalgic old man. So I have the ability to remember when I was a kid and the 16-bit generation started and Mm -hmm. what it was like to go from the 8-bit world into like a Nintendo that's super. And Mode 7. Mode 7 was... Mode 7 was the coolest thing, dude. <laughs> oh, I loved mo- any game with Mode 7. I was like, it's amazing. 10 out of 10. It's just got Mode 7 graphics. That's all it needs. That's all we need. And uh, so it's like the Switch probably, if you were to like have like a, a list on paper, the Switch is probably going to be the better console. But I'm also just going to have that nostalgic 11-year-old version of myself that was so jazzed when the 16-bit generation started. Mm-hmm. When this no, started. the 64, so. man. The 64. Well, the rumble packs. That's just because yeah. you're younger through. than That's just because you're gonna, younger than We're going to slide a box in here, and it's yeah. just going to breathe new life into the console. You're, that's you're just because gonna... you're younger, man. That is just because you're younger. Well, Freaking I'm Power not, Rangers gonna, and whatever. <laughs> I'm going to blow your minds, though. Okay. I'm actually going to agree with Chris. Oh, no. My, my all-time favorite console is the Nintendo Oh, my gosh. I'm on a lonely island right now i thought i had a now, i thought i had an now ally just, <laughs> now if you're just talking about library you're not talking about hardware and the influence that it had in its time playstation yeah. 2 is still oh, by, by far, far the most yeah. influential most console influential. That's ever existed. it brought gaming well, into the mainstream in no I, way anybody could sorry but we are we are way sorry rob I, um i was kind of cut you off can you repeat that 
Oh, I was just, uh, I was, I was like agreeing with Chris. Like, yes, the PS2 probably is the best library, but I think the NES also makes a case because mm -hmm. of its influence at its time. Sure. But, okay. You know, sure. And, you, really and the number of games you have to put within the context of the number of developers, which is why now is so unique, because yeah. now there's so much money and the economy is good in many parts of the world. And so yeah. everybody that can invest in a, in a studio is investing in a studio. So yeah. this, to bring this all around back to, I said, a question of controversy is oh, yeah. does the Nintendo Switch even need the virtual console? So I would say no, it doesn't need it, which is a controversial question and a controversial answer Ooh. to that question. <laughs> now, that doesn't mean I don't want it. Right. And it doesn't mean that most people aren't dying to know when the thing's coming. And I, I Or if it's coming at all. Or if it's coming, it's just true. I tend to lean a little bit on the side that it is coming, um, but we, we still just don't know. But I feel like Nintendo's in such a unique position. There are all these collections of old games, a Mega Man collection, mm -hmm. a Street Fighter collection, a Spyro collection. They keep coming out with those. And Nintendo has an NES Classic and a Super NES Classic. And now Sega's doing their own. Like mm -hmm. So the retro game are still being like sold as a business model to people in like separate packages. So while, again, they would make everyone happy if they released a virtual console, and I certainly want it. I think if the Switch never gets one, I don't really think it's going to actively hurt Nintendo or the Switch. Mm -hmm. But it would be a huge boon if they did do it, because they would just make that much more money. So, Chris? That's what, my thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think that, you know, when it comes to bridging the gap between mobile and and PC right now, and like console and PC, they're kind of joining camps right now. And then you have these mobile platforms, which Game Boy's played around in, but you talk about like iPhone and tablet and all that. And they literally just view each other as like, you don't even know what you're talking about. And the Switch is like, no, nah, we're gonna sit totally dead center here. We can do all of this. And so when you're, when you're forging new ground like that, yes, you could say we're ahead and we're gonna stay ahead. And so I don't need anything else. Mm -hmm. But why not go for broke? Why not just say, I, I don't think anybody else can come out with a platform to compete with us, but by the time they do, our virtual console will be live. Like, why not just put the lead so far in the ground that like, just don't even try Microsoft. Don't it's even come to the punch. table. It's the knockout punch, well, yeah. I, I think I, I think that the better thing, the thing I want rather than a virtual console is I want them to look back at the, those libraries and just remaster them in the regards of like, I would love, like, have you seen any of the footage from Octopath Traveler? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I, I'm in love with this game. July 13th, can't praise it enough. I've played that demo okay. so yeah. much, it's it's scary. Like, what are you playing? Still playing Octopath Traveler demo. <laughs> Uh, and just like just Watch the demo alone, man. Yeah, but my fear with that is is we don't get enough of them, right? Right. They pick their favorites, not my favorite. Right. Now that's if they remaster the rest, all of them. They can that, blanket when, when hundreds look, of us at once. When I look at that art style, would I rather play a four by three dimensional version of Super Mario World or Chrono Trigger or Insert X game, or would I rather them just take some time? And make it stand out, make it new for the era, but with by the same time keeping it the same. Like, like Chrono Trigger has the ability to have that for that sixteen by nine wide aspect ratio. We have it right now on PC. Okay, can I have it on Switch, please? Uh, yeah. You know, they remastered Secret of Mana. Can I have it on Switch, please? It's like that's that's you know uh, there was a great meme that was going around and I loved it because it was that you know it had, a, it had two jars side by side. One said square jar. There was a couple of dollars in it. The other one says, "Can I have this on the Switch?" And it was overflowing <laughs> in money because that's exactly what <laughs> that's exactly what this entails. And so yes, Virtual Console, thank you. You know that's cool. But you know what would be really exciting is a 16 by 9 Super Mario World. They have the ability. They own the uh, the property. Now the question is, is that the right investment? That's a business decision at that point that I don't have enough information to say, yes, it's worth the, the investment. But what Rob brought up and what's actually really where, where basically I think his point was going is that they're finding there's more money in releasing the collections rather than the virtual console. So they can charge you 40 or 60 bucks for the collection or they can just charge you five, six or ten dollars for the on the virtual console release and it's like no let's just just put it here it's it's the same amount of work right so why not make more money so a business decision i'm you know they kind of it's been it's almost it's a year and a half if they don't talk about it at the c3 and if it's not that there's no, if some of it's not baked in to their 
their back end, their online. Their, their yeah. online. Um, then I don't think we'll see it unless they get into trouble. It, it ends up being like the, okay, go ahead and run. For some reason, we're not selling Switch. Like, for some reason, yeah. you know, the, the polarity shifts, and, was, and you know, that's when they're like, here you go. But the reason I think that they might do that is they already talked about bringing online functionality to these classic NES games and SNES yeah, games. Bring, I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. I was thinking. Take, take it, Rob. Take it. Sure. Um, I, I, I just think that you make a good point because they – and it's tricky because when we talk about the packaged games that they're doing as opposed to like a virtual console version, mm -hmm. kind of to Chris's point, as great as those can be, what happens is we're, we're relegated to whatever they decide to do that with, which mm -hmm. I think is what you were saying with like a remaster, Chris. Like we have to hope they release like a, a 2D Metroid retail release of all the 2D Metroid games or whatever, as opposed to just a blanket virtual console that has everything available we can well, want. Especially for all the stuff that So really you get Metroid, popular. but then you don't get Kirby. Right. right. Exactly. Think so of all the great Kirby, Kirby games. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't get them because they put all their money in in Metroid. I yeah. loved Kirby. Maddie's been playing the demo. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, I don't I get it. Don't I, I didn't get Kirby I Streamland games. I haven't uh, I haven't gotten into was because you mean uh, the um, yeah Star Allies. Star Allies. Yeah. So yeah. Maddie's been playing the demo and she loves it and she doesn't know it's a demo. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, cost, it's yeah, free. Dollars. Play it all you want. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Keep going. Oh, you beat it. Yeah. I'll beat it again. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I, I think that's, you know, that's really kind of, um, as far as predictions go, though, so it's hard, like getting us kind of back to the topic at hand, because those are all like really like interesting fundamental things is that Ninten it's Nintendo's game to lose. And the thing that comes down to it is that obviously, um, you know, when we do E3 predictions, when we talk about what we think Nintendo's going to do, and I'd like us to go around the horn and say, like maybe the top three games that we feel like they're going to... We know that Smash Brothers is going to be there, so maybe not include Smash Brothers, but what other games do we think that they're going to show? Because they said, we're going to have the Splatoon 2 Invitational, then we're going to do Smash Brothers, and they've got the Treehouse, and obviously they'll announce stuff, right? But they're not telling us what it is. So let's let's try to focus in on what we don't know or what we rumor-wise. Um, but then the other kind of question is, is that, like, third party. You know, we talked about it, like, okay, yeah, maybe it's not fixed, but it's definitely healthy. It's definitely getting better. It's, you know, it's starting to actually be a dog in the fight and being able to compete against Nintendo. Nintendo's IP doesn't have to carry month over month. I've been playing, uh, you know, Lost Fear. I've been playing, you know, Celeste. Those aren't Nintendo games, you know, but they're on the Nintendo system. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, I think, you know, let's try to also think about, like, what do you think third party brings to this? You know, they've had some success. Uh, they've been, the, the thing, the news for me that made me super excited was that third parties' sales are above expectations. And if nothing else, like, oh my gosh, like people are actually buying our games on this platform. Go, yeah. go, 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 as opposed to wait and see, wait and see, wait and see. Now, that does take time. So, what was it? What does E3 look like? And we'll start with you, Rap. Um, so as far as like, do you want like three games kind of thing? Yeah, hit, hit yeah. us up with three games. With three games? Okay, that are coming so out in the, you know, they're really the focus. It'll like, be announced at E3. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I got to stick to my guns in Animal Crossing. I still just feel like that game is going to happen. I think it's going to come. Um, the As far as the third party situation, mm -hmm. I'm one of the few people that's been singing the Call of Duty tune. I just mm. feel like that game is going to be coming to the Switch. Makes sense, um, yeah. Yeah, it really makes sense. There's so many reasons why Call of Duty should be on that console. Um, and there there already were rumors about that, too. So it's I'm not even necessarily just making that up entirely. There was some rumblings behind the scenes. about Oh, I hear that even before it was confirmed as Black Ops 4, actually, mm -hmm. the next one. The rumor was it's Black Ops 4 and that there could be a Switch version. So okay. that's already that's already been discussed. Yeah, which is really exciting. And. You know, I'm, I'm enough of a Call of Duty fan that I would absolutely love to play that game on the Switch. I think it'd be so fun to have that multiplayer kind of thing. Just portable, man. To just pick that right up off your TV and play Call of Duty anywhere. I know it's like a dumb series and people no, make who fun cares? of it. Yeah, I like this. If you like the game, like, people can have their own opinions and that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and there's money to make, too. A Call of Duty on the Switch, everyone's making money if they do Does that. it have a Battle Royale mode? Man, I don't know, but I think maybe because you, you're talking about those rumors, right? That there's been mm -hmm. rumors about that. Yeah, I mean, they'd be crazy not to do. I'd that. be so silly if if they have the if they had the tech and the, and they can do it. Yeah, it, you you just you're just it, it's an experiment. I we don't know if it will be successful, but yeah. why not? Why not try? I mean, it's so popular right now. It seems silly not to. <laughs> yeah, um, oh. the, the last the only other third party game I would I would think also has everyone's talked about this, but Grand Theft Auto. I think it's time for Grand Theft Auto or Rockstar to get something else on the console. 
um, since yeah. LR did so well. So that's that's going to be it's going to be my hope, man. I think Animal Crossing, Call of Duty, and Grand Theft Auto all have good shots at showing up. So. Apparently, the Twitch chat was broken. <laughs> oh, no. it looks like it was fixed though, which is good. Oh, okay, <laughs> I think. Um... I think it'll be. I think Pokemon will either get a Sun and Moon port announced for this year, or will get its new game announced for this year. We are getting a Pokemon game this year. That that would be my my first guess. What month? In the ring. I would be okay with a port. I think it'll be. I think it'll be after Smash Brothers, but before Christmas. Mm -hmm. So that kind of uh, October November timeline. Uh, I think immediately after Pokemon, we're gonna get Kingdom Hearts in late November oh, on the Switch. Yeah. Dude, they should do like, that, yeah. man. They should do Kingdom that. Hearts that would 3. be insanely amazing. That would be I would that 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 <laughs> that would melt my head. That actually okay, okay. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's I'm sorry. what I'd like I'm to I'm so see. sorry. You just like I my mind is just like I think it's reasonable. I don't think it's unreasonable. No, it, it I is. think it's one of and those things I that think... would melt my mind because it puts me in a spiritual dilemma. What platform do I play it on? Platform. Yeah. What platform? Because right now, if it's on PS4, Switch? because Right, because Done. It has because to be. out of the three, it has out of the three, like Microsoft right now is suffering from JRPGs and those kind of style games. So my only option has been PlayStation and maybe PC. And then, it, you know, it's like, okay, I like playing with the controller. I like the, you know, the PS4 environment over Steam, in my opinion. But then, anyway, it gets into a whole complex issues that's not the topic of this uh, podcast. But then it started coming to Switch and PS4. Immediately, immediately Switch. Like, hands down. Graphics? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Does it play? Is it fun? Can I yeah. take it with me? There we go. Yeah. And then I would say something like a Mario Party because they're they're oh, lacking wow. party style games, but I don't think it'll be this year because they've got Smash Brothers to fill that gap. Do they announce so it? So I think instead we'd be, but I do think that there will be a big third party announcement. So I think Fortnite is an obvious shoe in to be on the Switch. Yeah, Fortnite very much is possible. You're too. stealing my you're stealing my thunder because I was down. yeah that's what... that could even be a late summer. That could be an immediate drop. I think that's I, I, could I see think that I could see that being you know order it now. It's mm -hmm. not live. I, they're, yeah. they're making they're making a million dollars a day or more before you put in their app sales and their app revenue is second only to netflix the amount of money yeah. they can dump into this just get oh, it yeah. done and it's already they've <laughs> yes. already recently optimized it for a mobile platform i know i mean plays very different it's ready course, which it's ready has, but it is ready it yeah. is ready. somebody will be good at it and somebody will be i good think at it. i think they announced the <laughs> i think they announced the beta starts at e3 I that think that really it's a part fun. of it. I think it's so big that it's a part of the video presentation. Fortnite yeah. was the thing I was going to lead in with, so I'll go ahead and just go. Yep. Yep. Uh, I think it's that they, Fortnite's coming to Switch, that it's uh, beta starts. Like, you can go download the beta and play it. They'll play it on the E3 show floor. They'll play it. You know, you can go download the beta on your Switch and, and participate. And then it's still in beta now. Like, it still says closed beta for, yeah. for Fortnite. So it's like, it's going to be in beta forever. So what is it with Battle Royale games, man? They all, they're, none of them are complete, and they're going out and everyone's playing them. It's that, such a weird thing. It's well, just so weird to me. It's, it, it, from an engineering perspective, so that's what I do. I'm a software engineer. I actually study game development, and then I looked at gotcha. the uh, industry, and I said, I would like to have a family, too. And sometimes those in, in some of the fields aren't really, like, they don't go together. Um, but it still can be, uh, it, it, so it's, it's called the MVP, the Minimal Viable Product. How do you get something good enough that people will play it and they and as long as they have that expectation that it's not finished, then oh, you get over it, all these things. Black for yourself to, mm -hmm. be, to get away with a couple of problems. Right. How long was Gmail in beta? It was in beta for like a decade. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like okay, yeah, everybody's using it, but it's mm -hmm. yeah, we're still calling it a beta because it communicates something. It communicates that we're not done. And when you have that expectation of, and then as gamers ourselves, when we're when our feedback is listened to and it's in a beta. We have, a, we have a sense of ownership that gets connected to that, and it builds the sense of trust and almost a, an intimacy, whether it's a, a true intimacy or a false one, with that company and with that game. And then we will go out and promote it because we love it, because we're actively participating in it. We're actively helping steer well, the direction. What is the cost? So what is the cost to the developer? Because right now, like PUBG, you could just leave, PUBG proved you can just leave something in beta as long as you want. Mm -hmm. So I think you should not be eligible for awards. Mm -hmm. I think that you should be limited in, in your ability to be put in the same categories on stores, you know, as games on sale. It's like, nah, it's, it's more of a pre-order. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I think, I think you need to encourage them to cross that finish line. Yeah. I know that's a totally other topic. But it's unfair the way some developers are abusing the term beta. I agree because it, it sort of it almost motivates a lot of these developers to rest on their laurels to be like, well, obviously it's good enough to exist. million dollars a month. We don't need to good finish. Good enough for people to buy for millions of dollars. <laughs> right. So like, 
more do we do? We'll finish one asset a month for the next five years and still make money. Mm -hmm. So you make a really good point. You need some sort of incentive for them to say, hey, this has to become a viable product. This has to become something that people really want to invest in. And that could even double your income because mm -hmm. now you have a finished version. Yeah. And, all of and that's different than DLC. That's different than Final Fantasy 15. That's different than like a Hitman series or like Fortnite mm -hmm. getting a new map. That is very different yeah. than updates to a game and, and continued support to a yeah. game. And Fortnite's about to change. You know, so Sink Weaver in chat saying, oh, you know, so season four is yeah. coming. Season four is coming. Meteor. Season four. All kinds I'm of stuff. Of but the hints, it's going to change. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Fortnite, I think, is absolutely there. Uh, I, I think Diablo 3 for Switch. Uh, I, that tease was just too good. Uh, yeah. Not to see, like, what are you doing? Like, that's what so. What a weird little what, fiasco that was. What that a was... weird little tweet that makes no sense. And but then, then they when just you put it in the. On it, yeah. Know? Well, uh, you know, it's like, no, no, no. Just, yeah, bring Diablo 3 to the, to the Switch, or for the love of goodness, make it Diablo 4, and, you know, it's everywhere. Yes. I hope oh, to see... Why would you even say that out loud? I love Diablo. We're going to do it. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm big on Diablo. Diablo and I, I think the thing that, that the, the weakness... The, so we, as we transition, I think crossplay is going to be a big topic at E3, and I think and Nintendo's already participating in it, and I hope that we get to see more of that. I hope that they, they say, hey, it's, here's Diablo 3, and you can crossplay, you know, because it's like... who it, it's Especially it's PvP. E. Who cares if what platform you're playing well, on? Who cares? To my knowledge, I think Fortnite already operates that way, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It does. So Fortnite like is crossplay. The only people who can't talk can to be. each other is Xbox and PlayStation. Yeah, because those two—it's a licensing thing. They got to do that for some dumb yeah. reason. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Once they're well, done, I mean, once they're done measuring it, we can all play together. <laughs> yeah. And what, what I like about the Fortnite thing, and mm -hmm. even like the crossplay thing you bring up, it it reminds me of of other aspects like. For me, the reason that could even work is when you look at what Rocket League did, mm -hmm. which is a great example of a similar sort of online experience to Fortnite. I know they're completely different gameplay, right. but they do the same thing in how the community keeps the game alive kind of thing. Also a very cross-play heavy experience. Been doing great on the Switch once they finally brought it to the Switch. To me, that opens up the arena for things like a Fortnite to make so much sense on the Switch, as we're obviously talking about here. That's like... That's one of those things they want on every platform possible. If they could put it on your left shoe, they want to put it on your <laughs> Yeah. Play it that way, you know? And uh, and I think that even further carries the conversation sort of relating to your Diablo thing. A game I also feel could have a shot at the Switch down the road is Overwatch. Which oh, is yes. A Blizzard game, another community-based game that thrives on its player base. Mm -hmm. I don't know if crossplay is a part of Overwatch or it's not. It's not, and it's, it's not. Okay. weird that it's not. At least but it'd the be the same right? negotiation as Diablo 3, right? Once you once you cross that bridge and you start porting over existing Blizzard games, the whole Activision family becomes even more entwined. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like Call of Duty. <clears throat> like it's Call like of Duty. That makes so much sense to me. And, and Call of Duty is changing their publish schedule. They're talking about moving to splitting the single player and multiplayer, which makes sense. Yeah. And, and that's what allows them to invest in titles more and, and carry them in cross-platform. Yeah. What's, what's sad to me about that is I think that there's something smart to the idea of wanting to change up how they're doing Call of Duty and developing it, whatever they decide to do. I personally don't love the idea of splitting the campaign and multiplayer thing. Like I'm, I, I'm not like mad about it, but I don't think it's ideal. Mm -hmm. What I would rather have them do, and they would never do this, but I'd rather have them just space out these games. Maybe they need to just pull off of the annual release. And if they give a biannual release where it's every other year, it's that much easier to make a new evolved multiplayer mode, a full campaign like normal, and then throw in a brand new mode like a battle royale or whatever they want to do to change up the mm -hmm. game. Because I feel like that's a huge reason that the rumors about Black Ops 4 are what they are, that there wouldn't be a campaign because it's probably a, a time thing and, mm -hmm. and a money thing. But oh, if yeah. they had more time to develop these games, I just I feel like they could do yeah, it. Yeah, that's it's the thing that has always just irked me about Activision, though, is that they annualize something until you hate it. You know, and it's like, you know, then you look at like games like Halo. Like, I loved Halo 5. The campaign was definitely not the strongest it of it. it. But the, the multiplayer like just stands it. out. And then you look at these, and they take oh, their the time. The campaign was good. They take their time. I liked the new campaign. Well, I'm saying that the, 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 the gameplay, game gameplay was solid. I think, you know, I just, the, I think they could have done more with Locke and his story. But anyway, that, that could be a whole other topic. Yeah, for they, they dropped the ball on that. Actually, you are right. So. so it'll be interesting to see what they do and how they pick it up. I thought it ended on an interesting twist. But anyway, this is yeah. not the, uh, the e Xbox E3. Yeah, Halo cast. <laughs> um, so as far as it goes, like that's the, those are two, and then the, the third one, the third game um, that I could that I could see them, uh, 
you know, obviously bringing that we haven't heard like any anything about would be, uh, you know, I, I could see them easily taking uh, you know, any of the ports from from Wii U. You look at the like Zelda Breath of the Wild, right? Okay, that's Orphan right now on the Wii U. I could easily see them putting that in. Uh, obviously not a new game, but a game that, again, like you look, they brought Splatoon, named it too. That's fine. Uh, Breath of the Wild remaster, or even, uh, um, uh, even um, why is it drawing? The Wolf one. <laughs> uh, oh, Twilight Princess? Twilight Princess. You know, yeah, really yeah. kind of bringing that into a new era. So it's like you look at it, and it's, it's going to have been like a year and a half. Like if you think of this fall, there's no Zelda title. And it, they don't need a Zelda title to come in and be the thing. But I think that, you know, typically, and maybe, and maybe it's, you know, we're only focusing on Switch right now. Obviously, they said there's support up to the, for uh, the, the 3DS until 2019. Yeah. Maybe they'll just like, hey, here's a Zelda game on, on, on the 3DS. Here you go. And then everybody's like, can I get it on Switch? Like, yeah. every, every time they go and say, here's this, you know, for the, like, you you uh, play through the Super, the, the Metroid uh, version for the 3DS, right? And the whole yeah, time it's like, up. Yeah, can, yeah. can I just, can I, uh, sorry to even, like, preempt your <laughs> your point. Oh, no, I just was going to bring that up as a comparison to what you're talking about. Because mm-hmm. that was a 3DS title that everyone was like, oh, my God, I want this on the Switch instead. And kind of upset it was on the 3DS. Yeah, is, even I if it was on both, you know, just, here you go. Yeah. You know, pick your platform. Been- Oh, man. Well, on the Zelda thing... How, how does that phase out? How do you phase the 3DS out? How do you... It's a good question. That is, how that you, is a great question. Like, what a handoff. Yeah. You it's, know? I, I feel like it's part of their business model already that when they oh. know the sales are slow enough for the 3DS, by the time that happens, the Switch will really be swimming pretty high. Mm-hmm. Like, in, in a parallel universe, universe, there's just a trade-in policy, and you trade yeah. your 3DS in, and you <laughs> get a Switch. Like, just... Yeah move us over but that's not how it's gonna happen well, it's gonna be less graceful the, i mean the, it certainly makes money so it's mm-hmm. like it's you can't also fault them like it's almost it's it's not really fair to say this but it's almost like the gamers fault because everyone keeps buying 3ds's so they're like well i guess we keep making them you well know? It, it it's so. like why would you why would you uh cut the, that revenue stream off it's a I mean, it's a it's a it's a mature it's a mature system it's got the library. That Nintendo can... doesn't care about money. They'll well, they don't need to. They they don't, like cut. they don't need to, yeah. but it would be silly for them not to. <laughs> um, the, yeah. Uh, but as far as it goes, like the, the other challenge here is because I'm sitting here, like I have all these really great games on on 3DS that I hate playing on the 3DS because that's why I love the Switch. It's so much more comfortable like this as opposed to the 3DS, which is like this. Even if in the, I have the XL and it's like I can play it for maybe 30 minutes at a time, and this has been my history with it even when I, it's not an age thing when i was in college i was like ah, i just want a controller i just want a controller and that's what nintendo delivered with the switch is i can play with the pro controller and i can pick it up and take it with me and either way i'm always i feel comfortable in, in whatever environment that i'm playing that system and so i look at like all these great classics that i have on 3ds and i was like man they have the two screen thing though you gotta how do you get around the two screen i mean and it, you can it's just a yeah. lot of work it's not a oh here's the file just you know schedule it for three months from now and we're good there's no virtual console that you say because there is a a physical challenge that you have to figure around those games are coded with the 2d with the two screens and i think the way you sunset the the 3ds is that if people are still buying it you keep making stuff for it and then it's not obviously there's a cutoff is it 2019 i honestly think that based off the the install base we're talking 2020 there's no way they're they're no, that doesn't mean that they're going to be sitting here and, and putting their best effort in it. Like you're not going to see, you know, them devoting all the resources to stuff. But they have this they're huge library. They're already not doing that, luckily. Right. And and I think that's the thing why I mean a lot of people, especially for me, so immersed in the Nintendo community. There is always conversation about let the 3DS die. The thing is done. It's not seven, eight year old tech or seven year old tech. The Switch is so much better and it's a portable. And like all these things, and it's like, that's all true. But to me, I think the reason I don't really care is because I don't think at this point mm-hmm. that Nintendo is developing for the 3DS to the detriment of the Switch. Right, no, no. It's obviously, we're seeing enough games for the Switch and we're seeing some of Nintendo's best development they've ever done on, on games. Mm-hmm. So obviously they're putting their, their full force and effort into the Switch as a console and into the games they're making for it. Making the occasional one-off 3DS game really isn't hurting the Switch market. It's no. just bonus stuff for the people and few kids out there who still have the 3DS. Right, who might not have been able to get a Switch yet for whatever reason. Yeah. The totally. other side of it, the other side of that coin, is also from a development cycle. It takes years to make these games. So if they don't cut it off until, let's say now, those games are yeah. still going to be coming out 
until you know the next decade and That's it's so you don't you don't sit here and just say hey we're halfway committed on you know we're five million dollars in in it's going to take us two million dollars to finish it it's going to be out next year what do you want us to do? And they say, finish it. And then if it's successful, we'll port it to switch. Like that's, I think essentially it almost becomes this test bed of, Oh, Hey, you know, let's it's, it's the, it's that it can become the platform for the green light. Hey, put your game out here. You have the biggest install base ever. If it does well, it's, we're going to make it real cheap, real easy. And that's the business model I would take. I would say, Hey, you know, every game that you put out on the 3ds from here on out, half off the original cost so you can yeah. take more risks you have the the install base to see and play and test and then all of a sudden you have a gateway right into the switch world for for a game that might not get any attention if you just try to do that same thing you know on a new platform i don't know i'm just I, there right I here might yeah. also <clears throat> eventually see i'm sorry chris go ahead man no i was just gonna say that we we were starting to come up on time so that i was is. just gonna yeah, to get us going back on topic one last time and say uh that as we wrap up on time Talking about games testing, talking about games that we anticipate, um, do you think we're done seeing delays? As we come out of E3 and we get all these announcements, we've only had a handful of delayed games. We, we talked about all the games we'd like to see announced for this year. How many of them actually hit the date that's announced at E3? Well, and again, are we? I'm assuming we're still specifically focused on the Switch, right? Like on yeah. yeah, well, just on the games that we mentioned even. Just on yeah. that kind of 10 games or so. Do you think that everything, if they do get announced for this year, that, that we continue that that process, or is E three a little more promised than followed through? That's a, that's a good question, and I think I think we might still be in only year two and like the second E three of the Switch. We're probably still in more of the promise phase than the follow through phase. I feel like, and even recently, Dark Souls became like a new victim to the delay thing. Like it was it was announced in January for all consoles. And then here we are a couple of weeks from the release and they delay specifically the Switch version. Um, and, and that's for an old game, by the way. Mm -hmm. in, I cannot freaking wait for that game, but it's an old game. So there's still something happening that, that makes that happen with a couple of games. The Switch is still different architecture, even though we know it's apparently very easy to develop for. Um, if we get some of these, some of these high profile games, um, like an Overwatch or a Grand Theft mm. Auto or a Fort. Well, Fortnite, we obviously just got probably pretty easy to just drop that. So that one, maybe not. But a lot of these other games, you know, I think a lot of them are going to hit. But I still think we might be in the territory where the occasional game might still get delayed. Mm -hmm. um, even on the first party side, we're still waiting for concrete information on Fire Emblem, which I brought up earlier. Right. And I seriously doubt that game is going to get delayed. I really think they're going to stick it to 2018. But I also wouldn't be shocked if it turned out that game did get delayed just because of... They've had January releases. I mean, Nintendo's not immune to that, so... Also true. Also, you know, and people talk about, about that, and, and they kind of forget the Switch is like the one console to do this weird thing where it released early in the year, mm -hmm. right around when Nintendo's fiscal year ends. So while a lot of stuff might not make it out in the calendar year of 2018, a lot of stuff, even like a Metroid or a Pokemon could still end up releasing in January, February, March, that first quarter, mm -hmm. which, yes, that's 2019, but it's Nintendo's fiscal year, and it's within the second year anniversary of the console itself. Mm -hmm. So they might have that window to sort of play with that makes it easier for some people to swallow. Look at look at this year's first quarter. First quarter 2018, though, has been one of the strongest video game lineups of just solid quality games. We're going to second yeah. quarter already. Yeah. Like, 2018 already is shaping out to be just an incredible year. And some, and in some cases, companies see that there's no reason to throw in their title into the pit of the, the holiday season if they aren't going to carry the holiday season. So why not delay it a couple of you know a month or two and you know dominate the the the, the spring, dominate the winter because it's, it's like so at some smart. point, yeah. It, it, and that's one of the things that's really been amazing about how where gaming has come from. Back when we were kids, it felt like there were just these long gaps between anything new or interesting to play, and now it's like. No, there's a season for each thing. And then, you know, like obviously August kind of kicks off the holiday season where you see all these really big titles. But then there's also the big titles in the, in that, in, in the spring and in, in the summer. And there's never seeming, especially yeah. multiplayer. I mean, God of War just came out in April. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. crazy. And, and it killed it. And it killed it. It dominated the month. <laughs> and so did Monster Hunter in January. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So like 9 million copies or something already. Yeah, so I think I think that we've seen throughout, yeah, throughout our lives that there's no real... Uh, you know, one way to make money in the no. industry. 
And that's actually E3 is exciting. Yeah, you know, like, right it, it can here. go it can go any which way. You know, as as we've talked about before in the channel, we talk about loot boxes and all the various different. Um, you know, grab, you know, like money grabs that people do that don't really offer value. They just like to try to sell you hype yeah. and then and things like that. But as far as it goes, I think I'd like to kind of my, my final thought and then we'll go around the, around the horn for final thoughts and uh, go into Q&A with the uh, with the chat here is, uh, you know, I think that if anything else, it's Nintendo's game to lose. Um, I think that they've positioned themselves in a way that has restored hope in, in the brand. It feels like with their partnership with DNA that we, we've seen a modern UI, we're seeing a, a more online-focused Nintendo. I'm personally really happy that they're going to be charging for online because you get what you pay for, and every time I tried to play Smash online, it was a pain in the butt. Uh, and it was just, yeah. it was so annoying that it was like, just, can I give you money so this doesn't just make my like head hurt? You know, yeah. it's like, and I'm hoping that we see um, that without throughout whatever is announced and whatever the schedule is for the second half of this year is that they deliver a really good online experience so that like all three of us could sit back and like place uh, online and have a good experience and not sit here and go like gosh man like why is it why are we always getting disconnected why you know like there, any number of things so that's what i hope for i hope that we see more and hopefully and we won't see this at e3 but i would love for nintendo to relax some of its youtube policies uh because it oh, is okay. such a pain in the butt to cover yeah. them because i want to talk about nintendo but then i i get slapped in the face sometimes by nintendo they still just don't get it they they just don't get that unfortunately so uh rob what's your uh well, actually we'll go chris and we'll, we'll have rob uh wrap his, with his final thought chris what's your final thoughts so my final thoughts is that 2018 is a year i'm excited about because i have thrown money at a lot of great companies activision ea microsoft a lot of great developers over the years because they've been on top and the underdogs the square enix and the nintendo of the room are and and kind of bethesda are the three that i'm really passionate about and square has done nothing over the last year but impress me with their ability to support existing titles and the lineup that they're lining up for and nintendo is knocking it out of the park with switch so it is really exciting to see kind of like two of relative to everybody else kind of my underdog favorites just be in a position where like i think square and nintendo might be two of the powerhouses going into e3 mm -hmm. and so i'm just really excited to see them going in with such a strong potential and like you said it's their game to lose um but i i hope i'm not getting myself too hyped but i think nintendo and square could come out big big winners out of e3 yeah, Square has a lot to do, and uh, if they if they knock out that Kingdom Hearts thing, and if they show us new stuff for Final Fantasy VII, I mean, that would be amazing. And I want to I want to see Square do that well because I do really like them. I don't play enough of their games, partly because of their schedule, and partly because again, I I have to space out my JRPG ness. I don't mm -hmm. have the time to get so dedicated to those. And I'm not an MMO guy, so 14 hasn't really grabbed me. Although. The game looks awesome. I've always wanted to try it. I just, I just can't do an MMO. My life just does not allow for it. Unfortunately. It's hard. You have to. It, it's it's a that's a, that's a topic for another day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but still, yeah. I mean, I, I like what you guys say, uh, Brian. I think your 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 idea about it's Nintendo's game to lose really couldn't be more true. I see it as Microsoft's game to win mm -hmm. and Nintendo's game to lose. I think that that's that's probably what I what I feel going into E3 as far as final thoughts and. And also, even Chris, to your point, I mean, everything you're talking about, the underdogs that have you so excited, I think that just shows how good of a state the gaming industry is and just the hobby is um, mm -hmm. that it just seems like there's room for everyone to have success. And there's room for everyone who likes different things to get what they want to get. And all these companies are bringing us great games. You look at the insane amount of variety coming out of all these companies whether it's a Breath of the Wild or it's a God of War, or it's one of these 10,000 award-winning indie games like a Celeste or whatever. Um, it's crazy, you know? And then, and then as a Square fan, Chris, we do have the promise of a Kingdom Hearts and a Final Fantasy VII at some point, which is super exciting. For and me, Octopath Kingdom Hearts is out there and there could and be which one? Final Fantasy VI, Octopath, Octopath and that's Traveler, and, Nintendo. Oh, and, Final, yeah. and Final Fantasy VI and, and could be possibly getting reintroduced at some point. Are they doing VII? Are they doing I, 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 No, been, it's the dream. It's, 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 the, it's rumors I keep dream. seeing. Six is the dream. Yeah, if they Seven did six the in the Octopath Traveler art style, that is that is the that is the pinnacle because whatever they released on iOS is an insult. <laughs> but uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, uh, Rob. Do you have any other thoughts? Uh, but yeah, no, I guess just that. I mean, I'm I'm just really excited, and uh, I I don't expect for Nintendo's for for specifically for Nintendo's E3 
to necessarily live up to what last year's was for me because that Metroid bomb drop <laughs> and then followed up with Samus Returns after that, I've never been happier. Never, never been happier. Last year was great all around because we also had Beyond Good and Evil 2 announced at Ubisoft, which mm -hmm. was like, I was like tears of joy for that. Even though I'm, I don't know how I feel about what we've seen, but to know they're doing something is exciting. Yeah. So I, I still feel like Nintendo's going to do great. And all they could do at this point is surprise us, you know, it turned... Turns out Fire Emblem comes out in August. It turns out that Pokemon is 2018, it, you know. And in my last video, I said, maybe they do decide to surprise us with like 60 seconds of Metroid just to tease, you know, and focus everything else on immediate games. So, I mean, I think they're going to have a great show. I'm hoping everyone has a great show. And so I'm, I'm excited. I can't yeah. wait. So all in all, it's going to be fun as it always ends up being, uh, you know. So I really want to thank Rob for joining us for the uh, episode four of the casually hardcore podcast uh sound off in the comments below what your predictions are what your hopes for nintendo are we'd love to hear them we'd love to have that conversation with you and so uh anyway uh, also a final shout out to all our patreons who support us and actually have funded the podcast making this a possibility within the work to game community so thanks to all our patrons you've seen their lovely names uh you know flashing up on the screen as it slides by uh once again for work to game my name's brian thanks so much for watching uh and we will catch you on the flip side that was so stupid. <laughs> what a what a what a horrible way to sound off. Catch like you we'll catch you on the flip side. Peace out, brothers. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, like he's getting worse. All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.